Okay, so it's um, six o'clock. I'd like to open the meeting. Um, and um, are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? Anybody have anything? No? I can't think of anything, no. Any public comment? Okay. Um, so I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, bills approved. Um, and then I would make a motion that we approve the minutes to the uh, May 13th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Here they are to be to be signed. Pass those on to Diana. Um, actually, I do have an adjustment to the agenda. Um, looks like Skip made us up a contract for the mowing. Um, kind of has his. And uh, we need to sign it. It's been signed by the, um, the uh, um, person that's doing the mowing, Derek Richardson, I think his name is. So, um, how do we deal with that right now while we're talking about it? So, yeah. here's the um, contract. We'll look at it. I, I looked at it earlier today and have signed it. But um, I'll bring this into Diana. Skip put together the contract for the. He did, he yes. Did. Yeah, I think we were lucky to land that person yeah. to do this. Um, looks like all the cemeteries were mowed by this past weekend. That's good. No complaints. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> As the sun comes out, you can hear the grass grow. Yeah, and uh, all this moisture. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know, um, I don't really know what happened with the cemetery commission, but we should probably try to figure that one out going, going forward. Contacted Patty Garbeck a little bit about it, and I thought they were going to meet. I, I have, don't know really <coughs> if they have or not, but um, I guess it's kind of a moot point at this point. But but try to avoid this next year. Um, it's really their job to get these bids and stuff together. Well, I mean, we the the town office has been helping them. Okay. And you know, since we did the the. Purchasing policy, the select board has kind of overseen it, but um, more to get the RFP out. Right, you um, run it down. Get it, yeah. There was more yeah. guidelines to my audit, to getting penalties, not having the liability coverage. Yeah. That it then became kind of in RFP. our hands yeah. Yeah. as far as putting out what our standards had to be. Um, yeah. So we did the kind of behind the scenes. And then what they've done in the past is get together to, to make a decision on the on the bids that come in. Of course, there weren't any bids this time, right. so it was the last minute um, before Memorial Weekend. So, but then it sort of became the town office's role to try to solve the problem, and it really should have been. You know, that's kind of in their that's board. That's what I was kind of gathering. Okay, yeah. so I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So hopefully next year. And I think you know we kind of. Shot ourselves in the foot by doing a three-year contract. I think yeah. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. No, we tried to get a three-year well, contract. Right. This, that. this is that was yeah. a problem. Even, I, even we won't do that in the future. Even yeah. with this one, I, I said no. I said Just do it this year is your new. Yeah. Year. We'll do a one-year, yeah. not knowing. You know, you may say it's too much or too yeah. little. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was part of the problem this year. Who knows? Anyway, we're ready for the town treasurer report. Everybody 
has our financial statements. Mm -hmm. I also printed out our Swenson um, there, yeah. deposits. Um, so this report will go into the town report um, for next year. Mm -hmm. So this is all four quarters that, that have been paid? Those are all three. So oh, far. the three, yep. So yep. we're still waiting for four. So we're waiting on four. Yep. yep. And that one so usually will come in in mid-July. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll have it completed to yep. the town report, which it's never been in there. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Uh, okay. I pay bills. <laughs> and I didn't need to transfer money because... Um, the whole errors on the state of education kicked us back um, for an overpayment. Uh -huh. um, so we received a check, two checks from one from Hazen and Woodbury School District, totaling $26,149.85. The total installments they had given me, we only get one one payment to the schools mm -hmm. 20 days after our tax due date. And um, that was exactly what they had instructed me to pay. Mm -hmm. um, but there was adjustments that failed to be made on their part. So it's been bouncing back by emails and that's what we got back. Mm -hmm. um, nice, nice chunk of money. Yes. Other items, prepaid taxes, vault fees in the past two weeks, vital records, um, Greenmount passports, um, we have a library donation. Um, so what I did, it ends up being a lot of paperwork I end up having to do, and I still do it, but as far as the library, the other funds, mm -hmm. so I incorporated it with it. I end up having to make three copies of just the library orders mm -hmm. to go into one for the library, one for my records, and then one for the select board. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to pull it out and start making copies until after. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so we... So the, the, signed, the signed library sheet, mm -hmm. I have that and I should have stuck it in with mm -hmm. your, the bills. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but the bill, library bills were in with the, the bills that we reviewed. Yep. Correct. So, yep. yep, payroll. Yep. And I don't think we thanked you last time for figuring out a way to total up yeah, all, all those different invo invoices. So this was greatly appreciated last time and this time <laughs> I don't too. Know what I did. I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever you did, it was great. Well, you we had a pile of invoices. You didn't have all separate. You had the all separate, then a, a final. And then a final tally for the what check. they all added up to that matched the check. But for a while, that wasn't happening, and it was really hard to kind of figure. Oh, out. you mean if I if I sub if I did different subtitles per yeah. fund? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I didn't fun. do that this time. It was like she said, yeah. Whatever you did this time, <laughs> it's great. Because I like, can go right down the list and match it right up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I attended the BLCT government accounting today. Mm -hmm. so my brain's just. <laughs> Where was that? No, prayer? It was at Fairly. Fairly. Big morning. Big morning. Yeah. Did you get a chance to check in with Bill Paul at all about? Yep, he was one of the speakers. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, key points um, that he had discussed with us also mm -hmm. came up. But it was a big, um, and they, he counteract, we were discussing the Beamer's um, liability. Mm -hmm. And um, for people who are on an accrued basis, have to show the later liabilities, where on cash, we don't. It's, it's what they instruct us, knowing that we don't have to deal with that aspect mm -hmm. on the on the balance sheet, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of a lot of other things that, that um, came up. Mm -hmm. So I need to sit down with, with Tom. Tom always used to for Marcia. He would come in and do the 941s. He would do um, state tax 
uh, VMERS because it was a second set of eyes double checking because I do payroll. Mm -hmm. I do the AP, but it's double checking that and that's what those monthly payments are. And, um, and right now he is at half of, because he does the bank rex from home now, he's only used half of what we have budgeted. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it always comes up about, about the security and always having two people mm -hmm. with their hands in it. And, um, mm -hmm. and if I do, if anything does happen to me, I'd like him more familiar with NIMRC. Right. If I go on leave, Mm -hmm. with the kidney donation that, that um, mm -hmm. he's going to have to come back more. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's it's simple and I know how to do it. So if it came down to it, me doing it, but I'd like him to start taking over that. That way mm -hmm. he's double checking the payroll and it's a second set and, and the controls mm -hmm. and, and with Susan there, the auditing, you know, yeah, that's one of the controls that should be in place. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're out, he will come in here or he'll still work from home? Oh, no, 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 no. He would have to come in here. He'd have to come in here. For payroll, for AP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he'd be back for a while while you're out. Yeah. Right. You're out, yeah. But I'd still like him to, because even for bank recs now, he does it from home. Yeah. But I'd like him to come in. That way he's checking the backup. Yeah. He's checking. He's doing the 941s. He's doing the, the state tax. Mm -hmm. The Department of Labor, because all that's doing is is um, making sure that there's no errors on my part. Yeah. Because bank recs, the money is accounted for. It's just it, it's another set of eyes. Mm -hmm. When you have controls in place, there should be always two people doing yeah, payroll for sure. and AP anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then it came up a more of, of making sure you have an annual audit. And in one town. Mm -hmm. They set five thousand aside a year until they were able to afford an audit. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what it cost them to do their audit? Yeah, not sure. They're very pricey. Yeah, they're very pricey. It was, I believe, they had Father Siegel, <coughs> and mm -hmm. um, they hadn't had it in years, but I don't know why. They were also attending the meeting. Mm -hmm. Somebody from there. I know Wilcott does it yearly, and I think it costs them, um, I have a memory of like $13,000 a year. Yeah. But that's been, a, yeah, you and have then, to go, the first, the first year first time is the job. they got to have a, a starting balance and an ending, and then they go from there. Yep. So it'd have to be kind of like, they do it next year, and then they can go forward doing them. They can't, mm -hmm. going backwards yeah, doesn't always work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have it all set and work from there. Yeah. Yeah. Far back, do you think that they would go to start? I don't think they go back. They would. They just start today, from now on forward. Yeah, right. makes sense because. So if if it's in the way it seems, it's a big chunk for the town to swallow. Mm -hmm. So if it is leading up to it, maybe one of our options would be doing setting aside mm -hmm. a little each year until. Yeah. Up to that. When was the last full audit? 92 or 94? It's in the long night. Time. So we, that, that seems probably long time we better plan for yeah. that. Yeah, that wasn't... That wasn't a full... We don't, I don't know how... That we wasn't a hired out audit. audit. It wasn't a full audit. Yeah. No. It yeah. seems to me to be prudent better. So right. Planning for yeah. that. Yeah. We, we had it on the fiscal year 20 budget, but then we... Uh, we dropped it because we were freaking out about how much money we were spending. <laughs> but they did, a big to discussion to today was um, how... But we, have to, we can't do that again. Yeah, we're going to have to do yeah. it, yeah. Was road crews wanting their extra money back that they didn't spend? And that's a big no-no. Which one are we talking about? At the end of the fiscal year, if the highway has any money left, it goes toward next year's... So it carries forward. It carries forward, but yeah. it deducts it off the tax because mm -hmm. you don't. Right, you wouldn't it. have to raise taxes again Correct. if you already Instead did it once. Of, yep. and that was a big or you're going to spend it for the end of the year. The, the, the um, road crews wanted that extra cushion. <laughs> to leave it in and then retax yeah. it. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Nope. So, okay. 
That was another discussion today that was fun and amusing. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll get that one. So will we, will we do some kind of assessment of um, at the end of the fiscal year that's coming up, the end of the month, um, or the I end know. of June? Will we do kind of a um, just an assessment of what there was for a surplus? You know, there isn't a wrap forward? up until usually the very tail end of July because there's still bills, still bills that come staggering. In, that come in. There's okay. going to be Swenson's always, you know, middle no, 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 for no. revenue for the last fiscal year. Um, and then at that point, I'll clear up my receivables um, that were pending and. Um, my payables, and it, I should, yeah, it'll be mm -hmm. a complete, mm -hmm. yeah. yep, of what's, what was left over, and, mm -hmm. and um, the financial statements showing where we are under and over. Right. So, yeah. Okay. okay. And then going forward to trying to um, finishing up with the budget mm -hmm. for this fiscal year. So right now you figure we're in good shape, we're not over budget? Um. Some I've been quite are. nervous because um, if you look at the do to do from uh -huh. and you see you Which one's due to? it's the very last it's up in your assets. Oh, so you have oh no no, 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 no sorry. Right Michael okay. is right because that that very does last explain yeah. that right. explains it. But you see this amount here. Yeah. So this is amount for the other funds that the town owes. So you subtract the the sweep the IC the ICS, ICS account sweep account, and you subtract the money market, and we've been kind of stabilized at fifty thousand left in the general. And granted, mm -hmm. we get incomes in, and we get you know delinquent taxes. It's just that makes me hold my breath a little bit, um, so we're knowing roughly. knowing. Depend. It's based on how many, how much delinquent like, taxes we get it left coming in for the next fiscal year, and, and I'm not cutting into their money. I'm not cutting into the other 13 funds' money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it may look like we have tons of money, but to me, that's not our money. Mm -hmm. It's it's the other funds. And, right. Um, so if it if we get uh, too close, then I will have to go out for it um, because I don't. Um, those are restricted money. Yeah, right. Yeah. So right now we're looking good. We're okay. Yes, we're still, <laughs> yeah. still floating. We're yeah. still floating. We're still good, and, and we're fine. It's just I get nervous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much for me to get nervous. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the low ebb of the year before the new taxes start. It floating. does, and then of course I just received my Mercedes Benz due seven one. So. That's a huge chunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. yeah. That one's right away. So and then we we um, we had them hold off until October for a new piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 come in pretty steady. Yeah. Right off the bat. This will be the last. Right for one. Payment for one of them. Yeah. Yep. These are town trucks. Yeah. 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 So which one's paid off this time? Oh, don't pick my brain. Uh, <laughs> actually, both both the ten wheelers will be paid off. Um, I think, according to the they're only a year apart, as I understand. Well, they're a year apart in a year, but they were but in the same. They were same purchased in the same fiscal year, so I think <coughs> this will be the last payment on both of the ten wheelers. Oh, that's good. And what is their replacement cycle? Uh. Probably time. And well, that's the thing is that we've kind of done it so many times that it's gotten shorter and shorter. We don't mm -hmm. expand. We're hoping to get a couple more years out. Yeah, get them so yeah. this one is the 2013 Freightliner that's done as of 7-1. So you got a payment and then it's over with. And we also have um, the last one on 14. So yeah, yeah so that one's yeah. on the... On seven fourteen, the other one's on seven one. So yeah, those two will be gone. We'll be so gone. here we go on to, and that's just it. Okay, here we go. So oh, good. replacements no, for those guys. Oh, uh, we've got not until two thousand and twenty-two, and those estimates. Years on that one here. 
So yeah, so within, we should be able to couple, at least years. a couple more. Years. I would think we want to separate these. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's why it would be nice if it's a seven or eight year. They should be at up. least that far apart. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're looking at at least a hundred thousand. Yeah, the two new ones of those. Expensive ones. You want to get them yep. opposite yeah. ends of there. So you're only doing one at a time. So we should be able to put tuck a little bit of money away into the HERF fund. Yeah, my idea would be to keep those payments just rolling back into yeah. the HERF. Do it. Payments don't come out of that anymore. No. They go into the equipment. But we could put the payments in the HERF in the, in the future. No, it's no, part of equipment. Anymore. It has oh. to be in the highway. But we could there use is money from the HERF fund to. Yeah, that's what I was saying. How to fill that fund? Because that fourteen thousand yeah. was for this was for. This fiscal year. Mm -hmm. This is the number that was left from, in. From Swenson, you mean, or that was left over in the HERF fund? Left over in the HERF fund. Yeah. That was budgeted yeah, last fiscal, fiscal year um, to help cover this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So there is the 14000 that should reimburse. But then it'll bring it to at least. We can cover that. We do. But you can help me understand because my thought it's process would be that if we've got a payment, to figure out how to keep that money to some place where we can help pay for the next part. There is the, the um, schedule that Brandy was looking at. I should get you a copy. Okay. Yeah, we but can get there. there each we itemized money. in the highway budget each vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we budget, but it's it's within the highway. There is no. There is no cushion for the herf in the lot because they're. Yeah, I was looking for something. Oh, the due twos. Yeah, right now the herf fund is about twenty thousand, well, nineteen thousand five hundred dollars is what we have in that at the moment. And of course, we've been kicking right. So if I removed everything that was when we went into it, I believe it was like fourteen thousand something that was supposed to be for this year's. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to get, I'd have to mm -hmm. go back into that to, to. That's right. They would go into into the HERF fund, or they would come out of it. It was designated <coughs> for highway equipment. Okay. Yeah. And I stuck so the trucks in the highway fund, and we right. left the fourteen in the HERF. Yep. And so the the highway took the kicker for the fourteen mm -hmm. as of right now. Well, as of right now. Mm -hmm. Any other on that questions? Yeah, it's looking good. Good Thank job. You. Mm -hmm. Get it, give me an added girl for that. No stress. Stressing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, if you want any copies of any of the equipment. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I just was thinking. If you, this is does not a copy that today. Right. Right. Stick that in the town right. report. This should do it. I'm not sure. The, the herb. No, we didn't. It wasn't in the time so. report. I don't so think that's it was another one that, that should be right. still um, just as far as how we're going <coughs> to go forward the future of the equipment. Right. Love it. All right. Thank you. So let me go over the town first. And the Miser Cross for looking all over the It was nice, and I came down earlier today because uh, the bills were already, so I actually had a little bit of time to, to go through it line by line. Yeah. yeah. First time I've really done that. Mm -hmm. I always get curious <clears throat> at, towards the end of the year. Right. What's the last year? Start going. Where are we? The only news I have of much importance is that the seven million dollar school budget passed yesterday, mm -hmm. with including forty four voters from Woodbury, uh -huh. a total of one hundred and thirty four no one hundred seventy four voters from the four towns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty pitiful. That's pitiful. It is. Point yeah. <laughs> zero zero three yeah. percent of people it's voted. Just about, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, our turnout was actually more than I expected, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't very many when I went over at lunchtime. I think yeah, she said it's not. I don't think they ever say anything else to give you a reference. 
I know. I have no references so compared to what we spent last time to this time. I, or very, even the budget itself. Right, what does this mean at all? Yeah. So there's really right. no reference for me. Yeah. yeah, and I, you know, you saw, I asked that at that meeting, that informational meeting mm -hmm. that we went to and didn't get much of an answer. And then I called the Secretary of State's office and I said, can, they didn't send out anything for voters to act on, but yet we're having this vote. And he said, well, you can't have anything in the polling place, but you can have something outside. So I put a box of them out on the stairs, but then it rained, so I had to take them. <laughs> Nobody yeah. really, I mean, you can't pick up something like that and Freak make up. sense of it right. while you're waiting for your voting booth. <laughs> Which you had so, no lines, no waiting lines. Right, yeah, we didn't even put up a voting booth. <laughs> So the next election, we're going to do this all again on June 25th. That's going to be really crazy because that's, all these articles have to be voted on. And each one, from what I've seen, from what was submitted before it was canceled, each article has its own like 11 by 17 ballot. Mm. Oh so my. it's really big printing so people can read it, but it's like so complicated. So it's another Australian ballot thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Individual towns, same as, same as this last one, or is it all in one place? It's, the voting going to be in each town, okay. but some of the votes get commingled for some articles and some of them don't. Oh, wow. So we're going to have to have like, I don't know if we have enough ballot boxes. Doug Stigley built the ones we have now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we've got three. Well, we could probably make something out of cardboard. So that'll be next month. Uh, otherwise? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how people even know how to vote on those things. I know. Right? You they know, the few of us have been following it. Yeah, there's no reference again confusing. to what it means. Yeah. Yeah. No. And they probably won't mail out anything. Mm -hmm. So there'll be some, you know, this something like where's that one? I just had it. Um, I don't know. Well, probably if she puts this whole thing in the newspaper, which I think maybe it was in there last week, it's going to be like this big. In the gazette. And, yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't know if people are going to really read that either. And then they come in, and of course we can't tell them anything, even if we understood it all. Right. You can't. Ballot so it's not mind. just me, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, man, yeah, oh, oh, you got my complaint, the, the email, another email from Kirk Land about yeah, the, uh, about gra the gravel yeah, going on to his yep. yard. Mm -hmm. Is that actually true? I haven't been down there. Well, yeah, there is pages. Um, when the, the first big rain that we yeah. had on April 20th, when there was still snow on the ground, the um, ditch down Valley Lake Road, the hill going down to his place, it was full of ice and snow, so the water ran down the road and gullied out the road, and then, of course, the bend in the, you know, yeah. the, bend at the bottom of the hill, shot on his lawn. the water went straight, yeah. and so there's a lot of gravel on his lawn that, um, you know, he wants the, us to remove, um, and the road crew is willing to do it, but it's not really at the top of the list, and Kirk is worried about his grass that isn't able to grow up. Yeah, but on the it. other hand, it's still wet. It's still and it's, wet to do yeah, it's very road. soft, so we would have to get on it with, it's, there's, it's pretty close to the road, so the heavy equipment wouldn't have to dry over a bunch of his lawn, but mm -hmm. kind of waiting for things to dry up a little okay. bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but he wants it done, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll, I'll, I have sent him a couple emails, but I'll, I'll send it. I'll respond to that. There's uh, a couple of holes. Did you think about whether the town could fill those holes? Well, I mean, you said try not to use expensive stone, but um, yeah, but not yeah, but not silt either. Just some right. regular granular the only, the only thing that again. The no. only thing that sounds like it would fit the bill is the stone that was there to begin with. Um, yeah. This is on his hill again. No, no this, this, this is by the, the old store. Okay. The, with the flooding that we had in the village. Yeah, right. It washed through and yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, that's really nice, like one inch stone that the ANR paid for. It washed yeah. underneath. Um, a lot of that yeah. disappeared 
but I, I asked our engineer what would be the best way to fill that. He said not to, don't use like ditching, you know, silty dirt, but you know, you need to spend that kind of money for that expensive stone because hopefully soon it'll be, it'll be going yeah, well, again. So really I was thinking of just grab, just green, you know, gravel. Well, why, why even fill it? Well, that's well, my thing too, because that's the state of Vermont's culvert. Well, well, but it is, well, but it, it is, is, I think it's in our space. It's, yeah, it's, our space. Not, it's, it's not still in theirs, but yeah. Could, I wonder if we could just tape around it. But well, that would be an alternative, yeah. Because it doesn't, you know, I mean, it doesn't make sense to waste more dirt in there and then dig it out and get rid mm -hmm. of it. Right. Yeah. yeah, we used to, well, yeah. The state did give us some barrels at one time, but those have disappeared yeah. <laughs> over the years. Right. Yeah. We could put some cones there and some Yeah, tape. we could put some cones. They're not um, going to keep any. I mean, nobody's going to get killed if they drive in there, I guess. But yeah, I saw it. But it's like, you know, a couple feet deep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 And who knows? Okay, so that would be <coughs> could be another heavy rain. And, <laughs> and then um, yesterday at the voting, Amanda Gravel, who lives right next door, said there's a pretty good washout hole on. Yeah, there's the stone wall. Yeah, the cones at the edge of their driveway. Right. I saw yeah. that. Uh -huh, I haven't and that's in that. their driveway, though. Hmm. But it, oh, that, that, that I can't tell if it's in the right state away. right away. It's either in their driveway or the state's right away, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think it might be in the right of way because it's right on the edge of the. It probably is. Where yeah, the culvert I mean, comes their, out. Their house is almost at the front <laughs> of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the state so. must have looked at that when they were up here checking stuff out. Or she said that they did. She said yeah. that somebody walked over because the day after mm -hmm. the flood, when I was down there, a couple of guys were down there walking around too. And Sean Ainsworth. Mm -hmm. Ainsworth. Is it? Anyways. So are they? Cons is it a? Is it a kind of a safety issue for them? I mean, obviously they drive their cars there to park. Are they worried about oh, that? Oh, um, because she said they don't. It's she doesn't think it's really part of their yard. But I just noticed on the way down tonight that there was a car parked fairly close to that close point. To but she just asked whether it was something that the town could help with or. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of just. Yeah. When you happen to go by, take a look and see whether it's a mistake right out. away or yeah. not. Because yeah. yeah. we could contact our V Trans, seven V Trans, and just mention that there's someone who's worried about. Now would that be Shauna or would Shana, that be down here? Well, yeah. that's the person I would mm. know to contact. And, and then the stuff on the other side, I'm pretty sure, is not in the right. No, way. I'm pretty sure it isn't either. Yeah, that hole. Okay. So shall we move on to the store? Sure. And I know Mike has some concerns, mm -hmm. and that's why he's here. So we have a we'll let. I don't know if Diane has any news to. I do. Oh, good. I, hope so. I uh, after the flooding, the recent flooding, I did send some pictures over to Lauren Oates, and mm -hmm. her response was, "Well, I hope the people in the yellow house are okay." <laughs> And, and she said uh, she hopes she'll get an answer for us in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Jeez, a girl. A few more. All retired in Florida with it. <laughs> so anyways, the survey has been completed as much as she can. This survey was paid for under the umbrella program that we signed up for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a &R has paid for the whole thing and it's taken a long time. I mean, I kind of knew it would. And I told the fire department if they have to have a survey on their property, they, Might should, hire them. they should probably mm -hmm. hire them. Now, I noticed they haven't driven any pins yet. Are they going to do you that? Know, I thought she had done that, but... I didn't um, see them because I wanted to see where they were. And I, mm -hmm. I couldn't find them other than some temporary pins. I hope they're temporary in the middle mm -hmm. of the yard. Yeah, Chris yeah. was saying the same thing. He was kind of surprised that they put some markers out there and didn't, they haven't talked to him at all yet about mm -hmm. what might be. Right, there's where markers across our lot, and then there's markers across at the town hall. There's these little nails, but there's no... Mm -hmm. Like, right, like if you go up the other property house. line yeah. on mm -hmm. the south side, 
of our property. There's actual yeah. pins with the little pin markers on them. Yeah. That was yeah. like the big spikes they... They use a big piece of rebar and then put a cap mm -hmm. that's stamped with the okay. pin yeah. number. Cool. Yeah. 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 Some of the stuff behind his house are maybe wooden stakes with okay. ribbons yeah. on So I was hoping they were going to go back and actually put some... Right. So if that's a yeah, survey, I'm sure I'd they like will. to give him a copy of it so he could at least see, I even see what it looks what like. The yeah. lines. So anyways, the issue here is uh, that uh, she, w she wants the town to talk with the fire department about the location of, of this line. It looks to her like your line is like about 12 feet in north, north of the pole. Of so this solved one of my problems because our lot line shows this line going this way and I thought it was straight, it is straight. So we have a lot more property there mm -hmm. than for us. And yeah, because the pole's right here. Yeah. I tend to agree with that's about where the line is because the landmarkers mm -hmm. show that, the big trees mm -hmm. show that. The stone wall, it all makes perfect sense mm -hmm. what she found. I wouldn't mind. You might as well have that. Okay. Yeah. You might as well have the CR. So yeah. do because yeah, the tax map shows the property going right here. It's actually straight. Oh, That's what okay. I thought. So she verified okay. what I thought. Yeah. And, and this is probably right because that pole is what we were kind of thinking was the line. But mm -hmm. if it's a few feet to one side or the other, I wouldn't believe that too. When they put the pole there, I'm sure they didn't care. Nope. What the property line was, so we just assumed. It. But I don't know if we could push and have them set pins. I think I'm pretty sure that's part of it, and yeah, I'm not sure that would settle it. Actually, and then done that now. I think she said something around <clears throat> here. About this. So I can keep this, okay? Yes. That would help. This is actually problem. this letter refers to the third progress print, which was about a week ago, and but this is actually the uh, completed copy. Yeah. And she mentioned that there maybe should be some kind of a quick, quick claim deed to confirm where that line is. Yeah, we're game for whatever, so. You might as well have that land right. because we're not going to be able to do anything on this side. Right, then, so. right, because that'll just be green space eventually, yeah. and we'll have to mm. mow it. We'll put it on ours and mow it. Mm. Keep it looking nice. Mm. Okay. So. And if they have any questions, they didn't think that he has to do is have her get in touch with me. Yeah. I'll talk to him about it. Well, oh, and John McCullough came in today. Okay. And. He's, I guess, part of your group representing Callis. Was it? Uh, could be. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so many meetings. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. So, anyways, I gave him a copy of the Perfect. Group. Okay. He, he, oh yes, John. Yeah, the other he's working with the architect. Yeah. He came in looking for. Correct. You'll be happy to see that. A deed the, description. Well, one of the questions was where that lot line is. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we were kind of waiting. And there's lots of good information yeah. here, going back to your deeds from. 1857. Yeah, there's an old barber shop. Does anyone remember the barber shop sitting in there somewhere? There's a, there's a mm -hmm. passage for the barber shop mm -hmm. I read in the deed. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where the barber shop was. Well, there used to be a tiny it was somewhere, little building it's somewhere down in here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, remember that little building down before you get to Healing Blake yep, yep, driveway? Yep. There was a little building there. Like See what's funny is the tax map shows that being like that, oh, so wow. it's not like that. Oh. And this, when you walk these walls, the real uh -huh. this this looks right. Hmm. This for what the land looks like. Mm -hmm. You always know, see the big stately trees mm -hmm. and the stone walls. I said that's mm -hmm. usually the real line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So that I got mine. Yeah. Yeah. Brian's got a copy. Yeah, Brian's got a copy. So here's a copy for first. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure the mylar will be filed eventually. And I'm sure with all the about driving the pins, yeah, it'd be nice to set the yeah. markers. Mm -hmm. She said here, I would also point out that the west end of this line would fall approximately 12.8 12 12 feet north of the power pole and pole brace near this corner, and thus would fall within the edge of the gravel dropped along the dug up section of the store property. So it's actually line quite a bit more than what's there. Falls within the area of the former gas tanks. But, oh well, I guess it sort of does. The fire department may want to have that end of the proposed line moved to the south. I don't, I don't know why though. Yeah, why Since the, unless you were concerned with any remaining 
not okay, really, and more concerned of our lot size yeah. for what we're trying to do. Where <laughs> so lot, line, lot lines are going to be an issue. The bigger so. the better. Since yeah. the line needs to be reestablished by deed, this would be the time to revise it if decide, desired. If you have any questions or comments. So I can call her directly yeah. and ask yeah. about that. Okay, because I would, you you know, if that's ours, I'd just soon have it, but we have to quick claim mm -hmm. it or figure out what the implications mm -hmm. are. Yeah, I think she could do that. When you did that, uh, up at the, um, the by the garage, garage. Mm -hmm. did the surveyor actually draw up the quick claim deeds, or did you have to have a? They probably just drew up the description, and then you had to yeah. have an attorney do the quick claim deeds. I can't remember. I don't I'm guessing. I don't remember mm -hmm. a quick claim deed, but. Um. Or maybe he decided he didn't want to do a quick claim deed. No, he. It's pretty much just kind of a. Um, um, lease, long term lease. Yeah, or it was sort of a trade off. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know Mike, you had some concerns, and might as well you mm -hmm. are a good person to be here too mm -hmm. with this discussion. So, all right. Uh, well, I've got a handout here, and you can take a look at it. Um, No, I just, oh, yeah. okay, it should be an extra one there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good. All right. I'll let you take a look so at you that. You told me you never get on your computer. I didn't. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I, you type it on a typewriter? Absolutely. <laughs> no. Huh? So you get a typewriter? I can type 60 minutes a word. Hey, you know how long it take to do that? Oh, boy. Well. 60 minutes a word. This says to Woodbury Town Office, but then it says I'm addressing this request to you. Right. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure who the holder of those records are. Mm -hmm. So it Diana pretty much the town, has the records. Yeah. Yeah. So officially, the town is probably them, but well, that's why you're CC. That's, I'm here. that's yeah. why they yeah. get the CC, so they yeah. we mm -hmm. can address it, and that's why I'm here. If anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's stuff we should be able to produce, right? Oh, we've got everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree to pay a reasonable customer cost. Now, if you need, well. That's all by, that's all by statute. You'll just yeah. have to go through what I have and tell me what you want. Because if you want um, I can answer copies that. of the studies and all that stuff, I can. Any, anything that is has a financial attachment to it. Mm -hmm. In other words, anything the, the spent, taxpayer somebody spent money. Anything that the taxpayers of Woodbury, state or not, federal government, all the monies being spent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can you break it down like state grants, town funds? Well, I'm not sure, somewhat. Some of the things, some of the state money that was spent, we don't even know how much it cost, how much they spent. For example, the Phase Two environmental right. assessment that the Regional Planning Commission paid for, we never saw any of that money. It didn't go through here. So you'd have All to the, just direct uh, him to those guys to yeah, get the money. They, right? uh, they have that. The, they, the, the, uh, so does the state the one that started the process, or is it the town that started the process of purchasing? Because that's who I think should be... The town. The town. Yeah. yeah. But, that, we, but we didn't do... We didn't... Yeah. We can, can, we can tell you all the town money that's been spent. Right. But State my, or federal money, we don't... Yeah. But, yeah. but my argument is that the town is the one... They got the ball rolling, and mm -hmm. is the one who incurred... Mm -hmm. Caused the people to incur these expenses. That's why I feel... They should be able to give us the answers to these numbers. Yeah, I mean the the regional planning commission. You know, we got the, the phase two study was paid for through a grant, uh, their Brownsfield program. They have all the records for that. Um, you know, we we don't have we not probably don't have them, but they do. 
and you could get them from them, or we could get them for you from them. What he's asking is you to direct him where to get those. Who has well, no, I, what I'm saying is, uh, no, what I'm saying is the town caused this whole event to transpire. Mm -hmm. They are the one that got the ball rolling, that started the financial mm -hmm. indebtedness to the taxpayer. So that's why I'm directing this to the town clerk, or to the town. Right. To give us, the taxpayers and the county, of what money is spent. Just looking for some transparency. There's been little to no transparency up to this point. Michael, this, this, you come in and say that every time. You know, we have, this is kind of like a, a, a budget or agenda item every month. There right. are minutes. You know, it's on HCTV. There's been nothing has been. But, done but I don't see table. anything. I don't see anything when I go out and I read the minutes. I don't see how much money has been spent. I don't see anything like that. So that's what the, I don't just see. Just the numbers is what you're. The numbers is what I'm right. looking so, for. So that's all. Mm -hmm. Having dealt with this at the state level quite a bit, we should be able to provide records that we're custodians of, which is what you're asking. Correct. And we can direct you to the records. Uh, the others are custodians. We can't produce records we don't have. Right. But in other words, mm -hmm. if you've got something where the town pays 20%, and the state pays right. 80%, mm -hmm. sure. we can you take should be able to give me the 80% yeah, yeah. number. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, what it sounds yeah, like. That, that's pretty simple. I mean, other. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is, me coming in on the back end, not knowing all the yeah. steps that have been on, right. I would say that you have asked that if there are other records, which you did mention, we don't know what right. someone's like, we would have to direct you to where to get those records. Well, well things like, we're not you know, and things like property taxes. Now, I know we had a tax abatement hearing for that piece of property, mm -hmm. and it was decided they weren't going to abate the taxes. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, the taxes, my understanding, have been abated. No. Or no, uh, they... In the, uh, in the uh, purchase and sale agreement, when that was being negotiated between the owners and the town, it was agreed that uh, the town would pay the outstanding property taxes. So the property owner hasn't paid taxes for how long? Mm, I think two, it's probably two, two or three, two or three years. years yeah. So the town has lost that money. It's incurred that expense. That's the kind of information I'm looking for. Because it's out. It hasn't happened yet. I mean, but well, the taxes are delinquent then, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So, but that's money still the town hasn't got. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's town. It's not only town money the town hasn't got. It's going to be town money the town is going to pay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With you know, I mean, the town pays itself. Yeah. Somehow, it's, there's got to be a record somehow yeah. that yeah. it gets paid yeah. from right. some right. fund or whatever. Right. But that's an expense to the taxpayer. Is what yeah. I'm saying. That's yeah. the kind of information I'm looking mm -hmm. for. That's an added expense to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of information I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. The state's not going to have that information. That's an issue that we're going to have. Okay. So in addition to the Regional Planning Commission paying for the Phase 2 report, the ANR uh, paid for the removal of the contaminated soil, and I don't know how much how much that was. And Trevor, this is the, my point again, isn't it? Right. We would just, we'll just direct where you that, to where yeah. to get those records. We're Does not that mean I have to file the same paperwork with them? Correct. Because we're not the custodian mm -hmm. of the records, is what I'm hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we don't, don't have those have records. That. You don't. would have to make that request to, to the, the state different entities. That so I guess he would want. And that's actually what you asked yeah. in your so, letter too. Yeah. So, so what, what, you, entities are what you should probably provide, Mike, is a list of you know the different yeah. phase two mm -hmm. planning mm -hmm. commission John seals. Uh, now about yeah. grants that we received. Do I have to get that information from the people? We don't have any grants. Well, the only grant we've received so far is twenty one hundred dollars from the Woodbury Fund. That's not taxpayer money. We don't have any FEMA commitment yet. So it sounds like we can produce the what we have the, the town 30, 000, spend. We have the thirty thousand dollars that the town approved two right. or three years ago, and I have mm -hmm. a record of who have records yeah. of all that. How that so like that and, and all I'm, I'm saying for transparency purposes, it would be nice to know where we are in that thirty thousand yeah. dollars. It sounds like she can produce that, but. I'll clean uh, this up. I got a couple. Yeah, but I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying is, that it's not just Mike that needs to know. The townspeople should know okay. where we are. Yeah. They are Sounds welcome to know. Yeah. I don't Hold think that's under the reasonable request. No? Yeah. no, absolutely not. I agree with you. We are, between Brandy's and my records, we've spent about half of that $30,000. Okay. But, but that's all reimbursable. You know, we get 75% of that back. 
Yeah, right, right at the end of the, um, the fund, the $30,000, there's 13786 mm -hmm. and 43 cents. That's okay. left in the Okay, and things like once they and make we, it. We have records of where, you know, that money, money that was spent for that. Um, we have records for that. And like Diana said, the money that we've spent so far from that fund will, is reimbursable through the FEMA grant that we're anxiously waiting for. So what you're saying, I, I just want to make sure that I'm not spinning my wheels here. So when you say you're going to be reimbursed by FEMA, mm -hmm. this amount, you still want me to go to FEMA to get that information? Or is no, that stuff no, no, FEMA no. won't have that information for you. They haven't, we haven't got the grant from them. You'll get what it tells you, you'll get what we have. It's just things like the tank remediation, right, when they pulled right. the dirty soil. Yeah. We don't have those records, is my understanding. That mm -hmm. was all paid for by the state. You'd have to go to the state to get those records. But I can tell you where you probably yeah, know. Just, where just, if you give me a, 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 and, and that's what your letter says, to show you, you where to get you, them. Yeah, if that's information mm -hmm. that you don't have, then mm -hmm. just give me right. the contact person you people have talked with mm -hmm. so I can yep. uh, do the same process mm -hmm. with, with, with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, after... The, assuming the acquisition is made, we still don't know when that's going to happen. Is that correct? Well, right. we're waiting. The, when the FEMA grant happens, um, then we start the process of purchasing the property. And you're going to have to go to the townspeople f for a vote for that money? No, we've no. already approved it. It's already been approved. And how much has that been approved for? It, that was part of the, the grant. Um, that was actually the amount that, um, that we have to pay for the property was established by FEMA. Um, and it was fifty-five thousand dollars or something, or something like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah. They we had to have an appraisal done, a pre-Irene appraisal, that was done by a professional, and that amount that he came up with is was put into the FEMA grant, and, um, and that was required of us by FEMA. So, so the thirty thousand dollars the town has spent, what you're saying is going to cover all the expenses of the town acquiring. They have, the people, have, the voters approved an additional fourteen thousand dollars this year, um, because you know it's been four years and things are getting more expensive. The the original thirty thousand dollars was, this is a um, seventy five twenty five percent. So that's the information I'm looking for. Right. Well, that that's, that's been in the well, minutes. For the years. Years. It sounds like you can produce that. Yeah. Because we're right. just going around and around is what I'm yeah. saying. We can, yeah. It sounds like we can produce what you're looking for or get you mm -hmm. the names of who to contact to get the information you're looking mm -hmm. for. So the original submission for the grant, 25% um, of that came to $30,000. That's what we voted on that town meeting. And the actual vote was that the townspeople voted to participate in the program to apply for FEMA for the money. And at that time, what we estimated was going to include $30,000 as the 25, 20 or 25, I don't even remember. 25 percent. <laughs> and since then, things have gotten more expensive, so we got another $14,000, but we still don't have a total. So. It might be more, it might be less. What, what I'm looking for is the total cost to the taxpayers of the state mm -hmm. of Vermont and to Town of Woodbury. So to far. Yeah, so Not far. Not including the federal government? No, I, well, no, I, I, I listed the federal government in there. Right, well, then she'll direct you where to go right. for that. So I guess what I'm looking for is, a at this point, until you get those figures together, a ballpark figure of how much money is going to be invested in that. That's to me is a simple question. I mean, it's all over and done with based on your purchase and sale agreement. Any remediation that has to be done after the building is tore down. Mm -hmm. Any and all money associated with that. That's what I'm looking for is a ballpark figure. Which mm -hmm. uh, somebody's got to have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. There's so, been, you know, I mean, between what we, you know, received, you know, the Browns Field. Yeah, we don't, we don't yeah, really was, know. We just have some. Originally, originally it was like forty thousand dollars for that phase two study, and then there was the study got compacted a little bit. It wasn't as complicated as they originally thought. So, but we don't really know what the. But then there was some more was. money that the regional planning commission paid out to have the next phase. Right. After the brownfield study, they had to go back and do. Um, There's some asbestos. A plan. Treatment. No, yeah. well, that's part yeah. of the whole. Thing. Yeah. But they have to do a plan on taking the soil out. That right. was also paid right. for by the right. Regional Planning Commission. And then the A&R paid for the actual removal. Yeah. 
the asbestos removal is part of the demolition project. Mm -hmm. So are we looking at 50,000, 200,000, you know, half a million? What do we, do we have an anticipated number, a finalization of that project? Somebody must, I mean, we aren't going into something totally blind, I would hope. No, and, and you know, a lot of this has been paid for, you know, these different studies, they're paid for, they weren't paid for by the town, um, but the, the... But they're paid for by you and I as taxpayers. By, by, you know, the federal grants are paid by everybody in the U.S. Right, but it's... We're getting um, some of it back. And the state, they're paid by everybody in the state. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's, you know, I mean, that's how anything gets done. Mostly the underground, st the uh, underground storage program, was, uh, the landowners paid the $10,000, you know, when they bought the property to uh, participate in that insurance fund. So that fund is actually, I think, been paid for by, um, you know, gas station owners and oil dealers and so over the last 30 years when these things have been an issue. I mean, one thing we've done, Michael, is try to take advantage of different state or federal programs that um, pay for these things mm -hmm. so that the town itself isn't paying for them. Um, granted, yes, we're all taxpayers, so technically, you know, we have paid for them in some way, but we've, we've tried to work the system as best we can to keep the actual town costs um, to a minimum. So, um, and we've been pretty lucky, I think. Mm -hmm. We've been pretty lucky. Now, so. once it's down, are they going to have to, once you purchase a property and you go in and remove it, this money's mm -hmm. already there for that, that's not going to... Or is that additional? It's part, no. of the, uh, part of the grant. Yeah, when, when we receive the grant. You we'll say it's part of it, it, but it's not all of it? The, well, the grant, the project involves all the studying that's been done so far, buying the property, taking it down, and then uh, re... re uh, stream rest, any kind of stream. Restoring the stream. stream back the way it was. Yeah. So any... No, I mean, I'm sure that I'm those like, are all in the grant application. So that's all those the barriers so nobody's falling in, the town's not held liable, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's just going to be an open brook like you have around yeah. the village. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like we see yeah. everywhere. That's my understanding of it. Is. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, be an open, open brook. brook like we have right in the banks mm -hmm. of the post office. And we don't have to get an additional study done for any of that stuff. Well, we, we have to have we a do design have for the stream rest yeah. restoration. But that's part, of the, that's part of the grant application, too. So, you have any estimates on what that might cost? Um, we have gotten an estimate yeah, from Don Marsh. Yeah. But the, we, were, we were advised to um, estimate generously for the FEMA money because if we don't spend it, that's good. <laughs> if we don't need it, that's good. But if we need it, then. Uh, so, what was that estimate? What? What was that estimate? I don't know. It was around $20,000, I think. Yeah, I think. And for the actual stream restoration, we had a couple of different estimates. Yeah, <coughs> anywhere between some thirty and fifty. Yeah. What? We do have some estimates on those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got the estimates. To they were just we... really because you can't see what's under there now. It's difficult to make any kind of an estimate. You know, mm -hmm. so the estimate. stream stream alterations specialist will have to approve it. And the so the estimates that we've gone ahead to and got this information you'll provide. Yeah, the estimates were needed in order to, to yeah. put into the grant, grant application. You know, so that'll all be inclusive with what I requested? You can, Diana can give you a copy of the yeah, grant application if you want. give you a copy of the grant application. Well, I'll, I don't need the copy of the application, I just need well, the monies. No, we don't have, well, well, it wouldn't be expended funds to, in order to get what you want, you'd have to get the grant application, right. sounds like. Right, Because mm -hmm. the funds haven't been expended. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's anticipation. It's anticipated. That those I funds. would suggest getting yeah. a copy of the grant yeah. application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be I mean, that, that's the whole, that's what this process is, is, you know, you get estimates, you figure out approximately how much this is going to cost, mm -hmm. and you put that in the application. You have to know, you have to present these figures in right. order for right. them to make a decision on it. And, and then hopefully, you know, the estimates are going to cover the costs. Would it... Do you think it's asking a lot if once a month or every other, you know, every selectman's meeting, if you 
post or put in your minutes up to that point once we get these numbers together what the town's cost has been so far so that it just for purpose of transparency you know if we could do that and and you know if, you, if you're going to do the groundwork of finding out how much the brownfields you know phase two I'll, study, I'll give you the numbers they give me yeah. and i'm just looking at the numbers that yeah no that, that would be good to know yeah that you people yeah. put your numbers together and i'll give you the numbers they give me and mm -hmm. and then you can you can post it so the people can see it. Yeah. Once we start, once we get the FEMA award letter, I think things will start to happen fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. so we've got the, the bank is ready to hand us the money, and um, we've got the contract for the demolition. We've got the purchase and sale agreement. We've got the uh, title search is done, and now the survey is done. So all the, oh, we're just waiting for that one letter, and then we'll start to spend. And because, you know, it's FEMA, and it's a federal grant, they basically aren't going to give us any money until um, we've spent it. It's reimbursement. So it's reimbursement. That's, that's the process. So we keep records of what we've spent, um, submit those records in a report, and then we get the money. So it's not like they're going to give us a chunk of money, and then we kind of spend it out. We have to... Spend it first, so the like first, every other FEMA grant. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's so we're going to be basically taking out a loan with the local union bank. The interest is included in that. It's a, actually the interest is extremely low because let's see how she explained it. It's a, they're lending money to a nonprofit, so they don't have to pay tax on the interest that they make from us. Mm -hmm. So borrowing that money for you know nine months or so is. So, yeah, the interest will be included in our total cost. They also said that, you know, if we wanted to start applying for, um, you know, our 75% of some of these small amounts we've already spent, we could do that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that until we get the grant award letter. The other question <laughs> I have is once that property is acquired, is it all going to remain in the town or is it going to... You know, as, as far as all going to remain in town. Yeah. So yes, nobody. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking of the, the neighbor next door there, uh, Chris. Mm -hmm. what, it has that to be a, a mitigation, so you're not allowed to ever bill or right. transfer it, there. It has to. Re, it has to be uh, restored to a green field, which means there's no. There can be no building on it. Right. Um, it can be grass or. There could be a little bit of a parking area, as long as the the parking area. If we couldn't pave it. It has to be. Um, is it impervious the word where water can run through um, so and that's part of the FEMA deal I mean this grant is not to get rid of the old store it's to try to um, remove the hazard, remove the hazard of the flooding um, that that's the whole this is part of a kind of post the money actually coming from this is a federal money for post Irene work on, on different you know, different towns um, for the, the flooding that happened during Irene um, with the FEMA, the FEMA money that came to the state for that. So the whole the whole reason for this grant is the flooding issue, not the the dilapidated you know eyesore in the middle of the village. Um, some people kind of lose sight of that, but that, that's that's what this grant is for: is to um, try to relieve the flooding issue in the village. Flood. Now, I was just looking at this, Mike, and it mm -hmm. shows, that's a store, that's Chris's property, and is it mm -hmm. showing that the town's property is right on the edge of his doorstep? And how does that affect him? Are you guys going to build That's what it seems to show. Is it going to be green space right up to his front steps, and he doesn't have a well, probably, driveway uh, you know, I don't think we no, have to yeah. mention that to anyone. Right. Well, yeah. it, it could very, you know, that, it, I think no, he's got an for an adverse possession. I think as that long case. as his driveway right. wasn't paved, he's okay. It is paved. It is, it is paved. paved. But, well, I, but I think that it's been, been there 15 plus years, so mm -hmm. I think that's adverse yeah, I don't possession. I think it's a huge issue. Yeah, I'm not going to use it. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to be concerned about that if he wants to sell a place that that he does have a property. Well, if he bought it without a, if he bought it without a survey, you know, or without a title search, or, you know, he probably knew there was. Because all this survey did is establish where those property lines are. Right. Mm -hmm. He could, only thing I think he could do if he's not going to just say, I've had it, is he'd have to challenge the survey somehow. Right. Yeah. Um, or, or the town for adverse possession. Yes, you're correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because right. yeah. the driveway's been there forever. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been there since the price is a corporal, you yeah. know? I mean, yeah. Well, the other issue for Chris is the well that's 
in in there somewhere. It's right now. It's the it. driveway somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that was. I shared. guess my question is: Would this be the time to correct that? For for and I'm I'm not a here advocating for Chris. I'm just thinking now. Him. If this, he wants to hire an attorney and do that, that's that's up to him. I don't think we have enough stuff going on here. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough with FEMA because I've dealt with FEMA stuff. They don't like mm. any changes. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that I when he bought the place, hotel. it was assumed <laughs> that it was halfway in the driveway. Now mm -hmm. it finds out yeah. different. So. Yeah. Well. But yeah, I'm sure he's going to be worried about, you know, what's the town going to do? I mm -hmm. think the town either should have an agreement that, you know, the pave is the pavement's going to be the pavement. We're not going to turn that into green space. Yeah. That would be my yeah. feeling. Yeah. yeah. we got to do yeah. something to mm -hmm. abate it. Yeah, because yeah. once they once they tear down the building yeah. and they start abutting up to what they, that that's the kind of thing that should be settled before any of that transpires. I would well, we it. said in the uh, contract for the renovation, the removal, demolition. the demolition, it specifies that there should be no damage to that pavement, and if it is, then the contractor has to, has to complete it. Because we were hoping that they could do the demolition without actually driving on that driveway. Right. But if they have to, then they'll have to repair it. Yeah. That's in the contract. Uh -huh. In fact, I know there's an easement on our deed for our side to allow the town to have machinery on our side. Regress and regress. Yeah. yeah, there's an easement yeah. there. Yeah. So we, we can let the machines go on our side to that part of the street. Yeah. Plus, we have an old... There's an old um, agreement that was signed by Earl Cookson, Doug Aronson, and somebody else, maybe Sprague Bailey, allowing the town to go back there. Right. That's part of that easement that's on our yeah, land, too. To go, go back there. To and a road uh, to Sprague's old place? All the way around the backside yeah. of the stream. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the right to go back there and make repairs to the to stream. To maintain the, the stream bed. Because I didn't understand it. And then when I saw the way you could drive an excavator along our land mm -hmm. and run behind the mm -hmm. store and mm -hmm. out toward where spray was. That's how common sense worked. Yep. That's how you did it back then. Because mm -hmm. I didn't understand what it was. Like, oh, it's just an easement so they can clean out the brook if they need to. It. Okay. Well, they need to now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a building. It's a building. I wonder whether... And it's really, full of rocks. Yeah. What happened last week? Was that the, the water back up? Where it goes under the store yes. and come in, or, or was there actually another block? So it, it, was, it, was, it was backing up along the stone wall right behind Chris's. That yeah. was one area was diverting a bunch of water, and the rest was mm -hmm. plugging up behind the store. As it entered the culvert. Yeah, it just couldn't fill it. It was just right. yeah. redirected yeah. around and went right through the fire station. And, and the, the, uh, the, there used to be a drop inlet there. That, yeah. That yeah. seems to be gone. Yeah. Right at the, near the, you know, just north of the... Power pole there. I've got a good picture. You can see where the water was just backing up behind the building. Mm -hmm. So, anybody have any questions on the paperwork that I've submitted? No, no. So, um, it doesn't give her a time frame. Is I think oh, yeah, it does three days. Three days. No, it was three days to to determine if you're the record. Holder. the record. Holder. But I think oh, okay. they, I think uh, I read in the secretary's. They give you 15 days, so 15 working days. 15 office days. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, you, you, you've got to I just want to make sure she had a reasonable amount of time to yeah. do with it. Yeah. Okay. So you'll produce that and send him where he needs to go yeah. for another record. Well, mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, there's a few things that I, I think some of the original advertising that we did for the. Uh, and a copy of the grant application. Yeah. Which isn't in here, but I think you should have Probably you. The uh, advertising in the newspapers that we did for the lead and asbestos, I don't think that's all in here, so I'll dig that out and have Randy put this in for total. Well, like I said, if you got any questions, feel free to, if I'm not there, leave the order my, with my plastic secretary there, the answering machine, <laughs> and um, I'll get back to you. We'll call you on your right. iPhone. You one of those two? Oh, I have a. Anybody over like somewhere between my age and like eighty, the people stop having iPhones. I start. Yeah. Having flip phones. Or no phones. Or no phones. Yeah. yeah. That's me. You go backwards for me. Everybody's got one. Yeah. It's yeah, uh, amazing. I'm sort of right on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a pager and all that. I got stuff. all that stuff, oh, man. I got yeah. pagers, phones. I got two phones. Wow. That should be enough for anybody. No. The only other question I got is looking at your agenda. The 
Mem memorandum of understanding with the volunteer. What's that involve? Well, you stick around. We're going to get to that. All right. <laughs> I'll stick around. Yeah, You're done with yeah. me. I'm done with you at this point, I guess. Okay. All right. So I saw Chance come in, and we could do that right now. Let's do chances. Yes, yeah, so nobody's sitting around for dog licenses. Right. <laughs> Is she coming back? No. Okay. I didn't want to take her seat. <laughs> well, he's so comfortable, he's probably going to have one in the half over there. It's okay. <laughs> I have a couple copies of it. We probably know I, like, I, I know what it said. I brought another one if somebody okay. needs to look at it. Yeah, I've got one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to look at it, Mike? Sure. Okay. Thank you. So is this something new that's just popped up? You guys? No, we've already had this just because you weren't here when we signed the last one. I was going to say, this has been going on okay. for a while. It's yeah. actually the same exact thing, but because of the uh, capital replacement plan, we needed to add that in. Yeah. So if you actually pull up the old one, you'll see that it's identical mm -hmm. other than yeah, the Skip designed one. this one for you? No, we did this oh, one. This is the no. same as we get. So you were on the board when I did this before back in, it was back in 2012, I want to say, 2013, when we mm -hmm. separated all the finances. Yeah. And then I had come in and said, well, it would make sense since we have the monies approved at town meeting, we should either have a contract with the town or an MOU saying what we're going to perform, mm -hmm. whatever. Because that's problem one. And problem two is the money is the way we allocate them at town meeting, mean they're payable 30 days after town meeting. So without that, without this agreement, that does the quarterly payments and when the truck payments do. Like Chance said, it's a, it's a, just only thing that's changed. It, it's an open-ended agreement. We could review it every year. We never have for a few right. years, and mm -hmm. uh, um, it's basically just adding when you would pay that capital fund that was approved this year. The only change, right? That's the only change. Mm -hmm. Other than the date, I changed. I did change the date to today. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. But this agreement's been in place for. Quite a long time. Quite a while, yeah. I, mean, I know we reviewed it since I've been on the select board. I remember at least twice, I think. And I, I would, I would suggest, you know, the next time we need to change this, we add a provision into it, stating, you know, it's only good for three years or whatever. That way, review. That way, it gets reviewed on a regular basis. Yeah, listen, it would be good to review it. <coughs> Just bring it up. Yeah. Because all it takes is a change of a couple select board members, and all of a sudden. No, yeah, nobody knows, what, nobody knows what it is anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, any questions or, or comments? No. Nope. Number six, get a quick question. What happens if that should occur? Which thing is it? Yeah, Paragraph uh, six. Budget failing? Uh, the very last line if, if an agreement cannot be reached. What's the protocol at that point? So this would, so, so say we ask for funds, our budget at the town meeting, and uh, I'll let you enter so I don't want to be improper so that we see. <laughs> well, in the, in the vision of our duties, I don't have a business. What I'm referring to, yeah. for, 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 so everybody knows. I'll let you, I can yeah. answer, I can answer, I know what it's. I'll say, yeah. The yeah. intent of it was, uh, what would happen is uh, if, if no funds were approved at town meeting, and we went one or two times, and, uh, we would then say we, we would either be out of business and you'd have no fire protection, um, or this says the select board might um, negotiate with us directly on how we might be paid to provide the service. Or we would go out of service, and then the select board has a problem. Mm -hmm. I guess my question is, what happens to all the properties and equipment if you go out of service? That, that all reverts to the town of Woodbury. Right. But it's, it's always been that way in our, in our uh, what do you call that? The uh, the bylaws, uh, by the, the stuff that's at the Secretary of the State's uh, office. Articles of incorporation, that's all in there. Mm -hmm. And just so I think this is almost identical to the Callus contract mm -hmm. that we signed. We just call it an MOU instead of a contract here. We can mm -hmm. call it a contract. Prior to doing this, we had nothing, so mm -hmm. you know we wouldn't do it, but you, we could just leave right. and not do anything. And that's I why I kind of said well, we got a lot of money coming our direction. I, as fire chief, and Steve Morris was president. We really would feel a lot more comfortable if there was a, a written agreement about what was to be performed. The protocol. Yeah, because yeah. with nothing, it just you know, if you had the wrong people there, they could say, "Well, we're just not responding to calls anymore." And, and, uh, 
who we could have. And this is renewed every year? Is that well, it's, it's an open-ended right now. No. And the reason I, say, reason I ask is when you have a, a member change in the select board, it may be a swing of opinions on how it's done. You know what I'm saying? Make sense? Yeah, so again, we're, this was just, that was the feeling when this was done to leave it open-ended. So if people want to change it, I suppose mm -hmm. we could make it an annual thing. I don't, we're, we're in weird territory because when you look at the selectman's handbook, the way you fund the fire department, mm -hmm. the select board doesn't oversee. So this gives the select board some. Mm -hmm. some but I don't see anywhere on here where it says the agreement may be canceled by either party upon 90 days. Okay, written notice. So there is. Uh, yeah, there is something there. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. Yeah. But what's weird about it is we'd still have the funds. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. <laughs> That's what's strange about the kind of thing. Do. Like I said, if we decide to you know, start doing this every couple of years, I, I personally would suggest that. Mm -hmm. Every MOU I've written for the state has a three-year window on it mm -hmm. and says we're going to review it by this date of this year. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I do would we, highly suggest that. Do we want to well. add that? Um, do you need this signed tonight? Could we, do you want to add that? to this MOU that we've got in front of us and um, I can go in the other room and add it and print it back out. I mean that's up to you. Guys. I like that. I yeah. mean I, I always wanted this to be either more frequently reviewed mm -hmm. because over time you know we're spending more money we're looking at a building there may want to be mm -hmm. more oversight by the select board in my opinion mm -hmm. and that's so this may want to change in some future date. Mm -hmm. So if we were to Review it and, and re-approve it every number of years. Would it be three years? Three years is that some? Well, but question two, what two, works. two years. I would say two because you guys get voted down. You, right. One of you is getting voted down every year. year. Right. Right. Three, yeah. you, you really could have a whole board, board in two, two years that, that have has board. never seen it. Mm -hmm. So at least that way, even if two of you did get voted off, you still have one guy left that mm -hmm. had signed the last MOU. So. Yeah. I would suggest two years. So do you still leave in the 90-day part? The question, my, yeah. my point being, well, yes. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because that, that's, right. that's a, this is a memorandum of understanding, and if yeah. the select board decides they don't want Woodbury Fire to provide fire service anymore, they're going to write it. 90 days, we're going right. to cancel. And then the two-year contract could turn into a yeah. year and well, what it's 90 days. You're just reviewing it every three years yeah. if there's change yeah. needed. Yeah. And, and it really is a wiggle room for the budget when it comes up for yeah, Town meeting. it's still weird because the budget's outside of that agreement. That's what I'm getting at. What I, the reason this was put in was to try to give some surety Stability. on paper. Well, because yeah. we could come in April 1st and say, we want all the money, and it's not even mm -hmm. Ju July 1st. That's why I kept saying it doesn't make any sense to me. It really makes more sense that has the payment schedule that we do the budget part quarterly and the truck fund, and now the capital fund would be paid by July 1st so we can do our truck stuff. And So it gives some control. Now, the obvious question at this point and, and for those who watch this is that we have a member of the board who was a fire chief of the fire department so do you and recuse yourself from a vote on he, this or what is the point? Well I'll, I'll, I'll tell yes. you what just so I'm happy to do it but the position is no I agree with you but um, I am not a business officer of the corporation so I could go either way my preference is not to vote on fire department things right there I mean it can if it's perceived conflict of interest, yeah, I agree with you. So yeah. my my preference would be to recuse myself mm -hmm. in fire department. I think it's, it's, it has to be brought up one way oh, or another. Yeah, yeah no, I knew this was coming because I, I we hadn't even had this, but that would be my preference is to not vote right. on these items. Right. But I was just trying to have you understand the structure of the mm -hmm. department. I'm yeah. A, yeah. I oversee the firefighting, not the. We had a time when I had to be way more involved in the business thing than I'm supposed to be because like I can approve an expense, I can't write a check. You know, this, so, so I can't tell the business side, the board and everything, what to do. They mm -hmm. tell me what to do. That's what happens in this, just so it's mm -hmm. clear. I don't have, I'm just, I'm just, just a number, another member voting, but agree with Mike 100%. Mm -hmm. I was, my point is I was going to recuse myself. Right. That was my point. And yeah, usually like VLCT advises it, even if there is a perception you know, a of, perception yeah. of, and there certainly is a perception. So I would just, I don't want any yeah. part of it. So right. yeah. that's why you show up at the, uh, truck or the building minutes so I can wear my right. fire chief's hat, yeah, exactly. not my slight board's hat. Yeah. So, so, so as I understand the procedure, if you have there's a three-man board, if you have two people who are voting on it and it's a tie vote, the motion fails. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, 
if you could make that change, you know, for a two-year review and um, cycling of approval, um, sure. If you literally yes, could I'll do it by going and I'll see if they'll just let me steal one of their computers. From okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to bring that up. We didn't get to talk about it before. We just kind of got out of cycle. We hadn't got to. We kind of divvied up chores for the building right. committee because I was like, I want to represent the fire department. That's right. why Michael goes. But we warned the meeting because you got two select board members there. So. Right. Again, for that perceived. Yeah, because I just don't want I don't want a perception of impropriety. Right. Right. That's where I was going. Right. So while Chance is doing that, we talk about uh, dog licenses. We could talk. And Laura, do you want to kind of? Leave? I mean, you know more about this than I do. Yeah. What, what? Why we're doing all this? Yep. I can just give you a quick the main points of it. Um, every by May thirtieth. Uh, we have to present you guys with a list of delinquent dogs. Which is that. This is right there. Yeah. Um, there is one noted that has sent in her proof that the dog has been vaccinated, but has not brought the money to pay for the license yet. That's the so process that's, one. Yep. Yeah. And then the one that has a star next to it, I kind of mentioned to you guys earlier, that's something that needs to be followed up on. Mm -hmm. um, I also, in that folder there, I printed out VLCT's definitions and explanations about what the responsibilities are for the town, the state law about it, and there's one section that has a note to you, Michael. It mentions that by July 25th, if you've sworn out any warrants, that you have to provide that to the state's attorney, or the board can be fined. And with that one on County Road last year, um, I believe that might apply. So I wanted to ask if you wanted me to contact them and see if we need to send them a copy of the warrant before July 25th. Or if you wanted to do it, um, I guess really who you should contact is Kim Silk to get a copy of. The, you know, I have. You have a copy of the warrant. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, I could contact them, or you know, if you have the copy of the warrant, um, obviously I, I would suggest that you just contact them and send them the warrant. And we should be good. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know for sure. And then if you want to review that, like. There's some repercussions that can be distributed if people are not following the rules. Okay. And there are a few. There's stars on the list of people that have been more than one year not registered and been contacted multiple times. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is finding people. And some other towns are starting to do that more mm -hmm. because it needs to be enforced. And that, that would be up to our animal control officer. Right. But if somebody gets bit and the dog is not registered, and they're on our delinquent list and we're not following up on it, that's health officer. So my, my thought process of this is whatever the law says we're supposed to do, that's what we should be directing should be doing. the dog warden to do yeah. Yeah. in okay. a timely manner. Okay. And not let it right, because she's exactly right. If we don't do this, the list's just going to grow. Right. And we're going to have a bigger problem. And a liability you know, grows we, Especially when you know about it. Mm -hmm. So I would direct our dog control person to take care of whatever, and if we need to sign something or whatever, we need to do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you can review that whenever you want, but it's okay. just information about it so you'll know All right. what they say about it. Do you it. have this on your computer? Mm -hmm. It might be good to send it to all three of us just so that we're aware, because I, I wasn't aware of any of this. Do we need some official motion or just... I don't think at this point. Just follow the law. Yeah. No. If something a, comes to our desk, we'll deal with it. There is a ordinance, a Blueberry Town ordinance, that was put in place when you were on the board, I think in right. 2011, was the last time it was updated, and that's in there as well. So. Okay. And I know um, Skip and Kim were working on updating, um, and I don't, think, I don't think it ever got totally finished. I think um, Skip sent a revision to Kim, and then um, I don't think if he, I don't know, I don't think he ever heard back. No, I'll check in with Skip about that. It was partly from, remember the time when the horse got killed in the village? Yes, I do. Very yeah, well. yeah. Um, so it was addressing some of the issues that came up then. Oh, so horses tried to kill me. <laughs> so, um, so I may, I, I'll check in with Skip because my memory is that the, the, the um, a revision of this um, ordinance uh, never got um, fully completed. But, but this is still good. Kim can still. Yeah, this yeah. That's, that has nothing to do with the ordinance. Right. The law spells out what's yes. to be done. You have it also. Let's just do that. Things are turning on a copy of the ordinance, too, I'm sure. They might have that already. And it, the only reason that they ask for it, I think, is just to make sure that the town is following protocol as far as. Because the town's given the authority to issue that warrant. Mm -hmm. 
so I think they just want to oversee it, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, Kim knows this stuff, so um, but um, I know he's also busy, so it'd be good to to have it in our heads, I guess. Oh, I'm counting votes. Not on here, is it? Oh, they came and took care of that on time this year. Yeah, as long mm -hmm. as it took us to get it done last year. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see that. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> yeah, things seem to settle down over there. It does, yeah. yeah. At least as far as we've heard, we have, you haven't heard of any problems over there? No. Other than a truck stuck across county or the other day, but they got it out of the way. Huh. Okay, so you'll contact um, the state's attorney with that warrant, and um, I'll contact Skip to see um, where that uh, revised ordinance, um, my memory is correct, and that it, it kind of got started but didn't get finished. Um, and should we be contacting Kim about any anything with this that, that you're he's, aware of? He's got the list and okay. he knows what his responsibilities are, but yeah. I haven't heard anything back from him except for when he stopped in one day real quick and he said, yeah, I've been getting your emails. Okay. But that's been it. All right. So maybe following up just to see how he's doing with it all mm -hmm. and just keeping up. Okay. That kind of thing. Thank you for... Um, Thank You're kind of doing the grunt work on this. Appreciate that. I love that kind of stuff. So Chance isn't back yet. Um, is there anything else about the unlicensed dogs? So you, you could you send us the information that's in this packet and um, we'll just kind of all in our leisure time. <laughs> you haven't seen my calendar for June yet, have you? <laughs> Um, no leisure? Not much leisure in it. <laughs> so until um, Chance gets back, what we could um, start working on the town highway report. Um, I put the May 20th flooding on, on there. Obviously, um, you know, it's and the Cabot Road washout is directly related to that. Um, there were other mini washouts and, and all over town that the road crew um, is st actually still dealing with. Um, I can share, but um, last night I had to do it a little bit too. Yeah, it rained pretty hard yesterday. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been, um, you know, as I mentioned before, I keep a rain gauge um, for the for another state program, and uh, we have over nine inches of rain so far in the month of May. Wow, yeah. we had almost four inches that night. It flooded in the village, yeah. right? Yeah, I had three and a half on my yeah. rain gauge for that. So, and you know, things were just, it kind of reminds me of the last time it flooded in the village where there had been a lot of rain, the ground was super saturated, and, and then we had a real heavy rain and, and <coughs> all the brooks were just the running over. The stage is set for Irene again. Yeah. It's the same year Irene. I don't ever remember, as long as I've been in town, ever remember any runoff running this late as a adult. Yeah. 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 It's no, true. it's true. Yeah. We've had water. Backed up, I saw twice already. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Only yeah, once so. did it get in the building for us, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. backed up one other time. We got yeah. down here and it did it receded. Yeah. So you guys get a lot of requests for private roads. Uh we've had one request. Um, Not usually a lot, though. No, no. East Lawn once in a while, and that's actually a good part of that's class four road. Yeah. Well, actually, class three, oh, class four, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, East Lawn. Yeah, East Lawn. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a, that's class four road. Yep. People that work on that. That's in Woodbury Lake. There's the only three I can think of yeah. that we've yeah. ever been approached by. Right. Yeah. So some of them, you have to assume some of the guys are on the back burner while you get everything else caught up. I'm guessing. Well, you know, <clears throat> like um, the North Road, which is the East Callis Road. Um, it's class three for a short stretch and then it's class four um, actually it's class four right to the Cabot line um, at this point in time um, but there are a number of camp owners that they usually come in once a year every or every other year and request some gravel mm -hmm. and we give them the gravel um, and they do the actual work on the class four road um, fixing it up so they pretty much maintain that road um, that's not a private road, and the roads that go down to the camps are private. Right. But um, the main artery in um, 
Down to, to the dam. We've got a little gravel on that road. Yeah. 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 Um, on the Nichols, Nichols, Nichols side. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And it's in our interest too to maintain <laughs> these roads, especially for the watershed stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the water going where it's supposed to. Yeah. Um, so I did want to talk about the the Cabot Road um, washout. I know that. Um, Brian, you you were they, the state folks from VTrans came and looked at it. Yeah. Um, did they have any? They didn't uh, get back to me get after they left. Okay. So I haven't heard. There's back. just one guy up there. One guy. We're just waiting to hear back from Wait, them. Wait, back from them. I did talk to Shauna um, a bit about that, and um, my um, from that conversation, I think what they're going to do is kind of they've looked at the situation. They're going to kind of come up with a. A remedial plan. Um, and they were going to do an estimate as well, right? Because yeah. there's a number where, right? We can get, yeah, we can we can get funding from VTrans to if it's be, over twenty five, twenty thousand, over twenty, it's over twenty thousand dollars, then it's eighty twenty. It's eighty twenty, yeah. It's under twenty, it's all on us. Yeah, but they haven't yeah. come up with an estimate. Yet. I haven't, haven't heard yet. Um, so maybe we'll give them another. Week or so, and then, <laughs> and then just make an inquiry. If, um, so. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. No, <laughs> take care. We're still talking yeah. about money, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Yeah. yeah so. Um, so they're we're still waiting to hear from that. Then. Waiting to hear from them about that. Yeah. One of the other things, along with that washout, mm -hmm. is the brook from Cabot Road down through to Route 14. Mm -hmm. The brook is, is full, full of rocks again. Full of rocks, and mm -hmm. it's so high that the water is coming over the banks in regularly the, and running right around Chris's on both sides. See, I guess so this is from the, the box from, culvert on the Cabot Road? Yeah, you can hear the stones coming down and right. landing in there, and it's a lot full, more full than yeah. it used so to be. So it's so high now that the water table, the water mm -hmm. level is really high there. Right. So, so for us yeah. to dig that, we're going to have to talk to the stream oh. engineer. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm just wondering if we're going to, if this other thing happens fast, that we're already going to have a stream engineer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Involved, or we could ask the stream engineer if we're allowed to go remove those rocks. My guess yeah. is they're not going to let us. They're not going to like that. I know. Yeah, because we went through this after. Remember, they opened it up for about two weeks. We quickly cleaned the brook behind yeah. the fire station. Yeah. If we hadn't yeah. done that, we'd have had to go through the permit process. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we got to figure that out because it is. Okay. He's getting water. He's coming. getting water yeah. constantly now in the basement. Because Who's that? Uh, Chris. Chris. Yeah, okay. Because it's just it's so high back there. Yeah. And every little rain that comes around it now and oh, runs over the banks. So. Yeah, it's terrible. They yeah. deposited a lot of fill right yeah. from that box culvert mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. to the store. Yeah. Probably all the way through. Yeah, well, that, that bank. Yeah. 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 Well, what it was, it was backing up at the store, and the rocks would just stop on that flat spot. Yeah. You had a lot of velocity yeah. created. Have we been able to, should I put my wetsuit on and go through that culvert underneath If you the want to. Again? I probably should. Make sure she has somebody watching when you do it. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, you know, what's in there? Yeah. It's probably a lot. Yeah. That's okay. why I wish they'd move forward with this thing because that's yeah, cause that real. needs to be part of it. Is taking, if they're, they're going to do it from right off this down. summer, if we got it done this right. summer, you could use the engineer who's there under the same right. process to clean up a little further. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll check in with um, a and and the whoever the stream engineer is about that. Um, yeah, because that's created a problem now. Yeah, that's going to be. Yeah. And are we keeping track of the other areas of washout? Yeah, because I know um, Chance was looking for numbers. Yeah, um, so we could maybe you know, get some reimbursement. Yeah, you know, they've been buying a ton of gravel. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Greg keeps a, a little journal. Uh, okay. So yeah, just yeah. out of curiosity, is he taking pictures? Yeah, we got. Um, that's okay. yeah. Um, Greg Adams has been taking pictures on his cell phone. He's got a lot okay. of pictures. Um, but again, this is the thing: getting those guys a. Uh, an iPad would be really handy for any of this stuff. Now they did have a camera over there. Don't know where, don't it, know is. where it is. It disappeared. Okay. Uh, that, gone. We did that way back. Yeah. You know, when we were doing this the last time. So. Yeah. And I've used my camera for you know some of the some of the projects. Um, but yeah, it would be great for them to have something that they could um, you know when they come on the moment of finding something that's washed out or just take the photos and, and then it's you know and then it's done. And, um, yeah. When you guys are looking, you might want to look for for a camera that's GIS compatible. It has that the GPS one, that way, that way. It's, it's, it's tagging all your photos. Right, that's, that's, that's the feds want it that way. Yeah. 
month if you can. Yeah, yeah. we almost it's talked about it one time. Every truck had a camera. That, just so if somebody comes yeah. across something, they could take a picture of it. Then rather than right. have that back. geolocates the ca the camera, the yeah. GIS geolocates the photograph. Yeah. Well, I know um, Greg has talked with um, the road foreman from East Montclair. Um, um, I can't remember his name, but. Um, so he has he has in mind a, a, an iPad and, and getting the apps on it with you know, like GPS. Um, it would really be it would be a good working tool. So it's for them there's something you can get us a quote on if that and yeah, it's like it's about a thousand dollars I think. Um, so um, but yeah, and he he would like to get one. So we've been talking about it for. A while. So I just want to see is the quote and what yeah. what benefit it would provide, what mm -hmm. programs, whatever. Yeah, yeah. What's on it? If it yeah. makes their job easier. And it's yeah. Reasonable. Um, East Montpelier was able to go through a program with Verizon where, the, um, but of course Verizon, we don't really have Verizon in this. You do on the hilltops. <laughs> yeah. Just tell them to hold it up and stand on top right. of the truck. Yeah. Um, so, and just, they basically provided the iPad with all, all of the apps that they would be needed. And, was, and then they pay a, you know, like a, a yearly monthly fee or whatever for it. Um, because AOT came up and they uh, they turned in a report saying seventy five thousand dollars worth of damage. Mm -hmm. For uh, us, however, I believe they're only referring to Route fourteen. I don't think they're talking about right. all the other <coughs> stuff. Right. It was, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. I told Jonathan we'd work on getting mm -hmm. something together. He said it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a specific format when I send it to him. So okay. It's just really a list of where, what, and well, how I, much. Okay. I think um, I could probably. I'm gonna. Meet with Greg Friday morning. I could, um, I'll work up a rough list for now. I mean, I can kind of. I have a list here. Um, basically, um, up on East Hill, there were two driveways that um, were washed out, and people were kind of homebound. Um, one person rented a car, um, and um, the Valley Lake, Scribner Road, Chartier Hill, Cranberry Meadow Road, um, Foster Hill, Town Farm Road. All those roads were pretty severely gullied. And um, there were a number of um, culverts that plugged. And one you lost, right, on the camp? camp well, that, that was actually... The older one, that's older, yeah. That was April 20th. Um, but that same culvert um, down by Greenwood Lake, with, where the falls are, that overran again. Um, um, and then there were other culverts that um, pretty much debris from the brooks caught in the face of the culvert and then created you know, a couple Locked, sticks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then the brush leaves packed up against them, um, and they're, so they're still unplugging culverts. Um. So have they actually seen all the roads? Because I know my road's not on that list, and my road needs to be looked at. So okay. I'm curious, how many roads have they not gotten to? There, there are still a few. Most? There are still a few. I mean, like your road is traveled on. Yeah, mine's a short road, but right. what I'm saying is, if they're not hitting all the roads, how many other roads are not on that list yet? Pretty much all the roads that were damaged with the, the flooding on May 20th um, have been addressed at this point. Except yours. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so you probably want to put his on the list. Uh, on I, I, I'm less worried about that as I am making sure we get we all, have the all the roads on, yeah. on this yeah. list what, when we you know, it to Jonathan. What basically happens is that, is that the more heavily traveled roads get the first attention and, sense, and yeah. then you know down the list. Um, so and you know they they've been hauling hauling gravel to you know and as soon as they get it in it gets brought out so that there's a lot of gravel that um, has gone to repair the roads. Um, so, um, so those numbers count too towards the FEMA stuff or the numbers of the, well, the dirt. Oh, oh, should oh, everything was washed out oh, yeah. and all the hours that you guys all the machine into it, times. And hours that you're putting into it, you and were, select yeah. board members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of these things go into that cost. Yep. Yeah. So I can. I'll try to have a rough list for you by early, early next week or. Uh, yeah, I know Greg. Greg keeps a, a little journal down there, so, um, so he's got loads of gravel and where they've worked and what they've done. Um, yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty much it on my on my list of. But and then you know some culverts. Um, the. It would wash out into the side of the road from the water. Right, from hitting it, yeah. yeah. So, so the head wall would wash away. Most yeah. of those have been repaired.
Anything else about the flooding at all? That um... well, it bores into the village parking lot. Right. The flood. I, I did not get quotes mm -hmm. for patching because before right. I could get them, the flood finished ruining the parking lot, which you've right. kind of looked at. All yeah, the it's it's, in it's, rough shape. it's ruined. The, the, all yeah. that pavement, you can just pick it up now. So mm -hmm. we're at at mm -hmm. replacing now. Yeah. So I don't know if any of that is recoverable or is it not a town. As far as with with, with the FEMA, with FEMA, FEMA um, we definitely. I just want before I went and got a quote to have it redone. Mm -hmm. um, I was wanting to say yes, please do that. Yeah. And I was the second question was, is it since it was destroyed by the flooding? I mean, it seems like that would be. Shonda be the one to ask that of, or is there I somebody could, else? Um, I could ask her that. Because um, what we saw was the water was running underneath the pavement and lifted it all up, and some yeah. the kids were picking it up and throwing it. Yes, yeah. yeah. we were doing truck checks, so I was like, yeah, this, there's no there's no patch to it that I'm getting to, so right. it's a waste of time to do that. Yeah. I was hoping we could patch it for a year, but it's just there's no patch to it. Take it up. Yeah. So what I was going to do is get a quote to have a company remove all the pavement, mm -hmm. you know, deal with the grade and repay okay. and then we can give that number to FEMA and mm -hmm. we can look at it ourselves and if that's mm -hmm. okay I just didn't want to do that if there's seems no like stomach for it. Okay. Seems like that's what we need to do, yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know if this would, <coughs> was there a timeline on when we need to get this information to John? I, I, I assume there was a timeline because he called me every day for three days uh -huh. asking yeah. me for the numbers and I'd call him back and mm -hmm. tell him I didn't have anything yet. Um, but then when I talked to him yesterday, he said, no, he said, you know, if they get it to you in the next couple of weeks, it's fine. Okay, says, okay. So it, I, it's I, not I like it's due yesterday. And I said, oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, I assumed with the urgency that he was calling mm -hmm. initially, there was a deadline. Just trying to get it going. I think he's, I think he's used to uh, not getting responses from people. Right, he's very busy we're, we're shoveling dirt. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're busy shoveling dirt. So I, I think his uh, urgency is uh, misplaced with us because mm -hmm. we're actually yeah, responding. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So they kind of all fit together. That's why I kind of yeah. brought it up. I was like, I, I don't, that's flood damage now, and I don't, it is, yeah. there's a repair to it. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's pretty much it for the, yeah, that's pretty much it for the time I were before, I think. And I assume that Greg will be here. I, I think we'll try to set it up so that he's here for our first, first, meeting. first meeting of each month. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've got a recently amended. Yeah, nobody actually caught my typo in there. I went uh, from seven to nine. Oh. Mm, yeah, I didn't which which was nice because it gave me eight that I could write this line uh -huh. about the renewal. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fine with um, approving this memorandum of understanding. Yep, uh, I read it already. So okay. Yep, I'm good. So, so yeah, so eight eight just says that we'll review it within two years of the signature okay. date. So yeah, great. I came with a coat. No, I'm taking it off out there. No, it must be out there. Yeah, I'm just taking it off out there. So, so you're the chief and you're the president. Is that true? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I need sign as fire chief. Yes. Because uh, I'm recusing myself officially yes. from the board. Yeah. yeah. For this purpose. I mean, I suppose we could write in the third select board I would say, spot yeah. that Paul I write something sanctioned by oh, you right. do it as the uh, okay. chair. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Obviously, would be in favor of it because I'm the one that proposed it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Not many, yeah. seven, eight years ago. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'll get a copy of those. And, uh, 
you want me to bring the copy back to you or leave it with Diana or? Uh, I guess leave it with Diana. Um, what do you think, Brian? Do uh, do you want a copy in the Yeah, it might be good to have, uh, have a copy of it. It's not like I have to walk yeah. that far. So. No, it's only a little bit there. <laughs> is, is that all you guys needed as far as uh, the flooding and everything else, too? Yeah, I think. Um, Perfect. Yeah, and I'll, I'll um, meet with Greg and we'll, I'll That's try to fine. get that information to you yeah. as Perfect. soon as I can. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And maybe by the end of, let's say by the towards the end of next week that we hadn't haven't heard anything from VTrans about the uh, Cato yeah. Royal. We can call, call again. again. Yeah, call yeah. and ask about them. They probably get a lot of calls. I'm sure they're pretty busy too, yeah, yeah, after this. Although, you know, it does seem to be pretty localized. Yeah, we had it bad. Yeah, good. I know St. Jay got about three inches of rain, but other places I don't think. Oh, really? really? Mm -hmm. We got hit as hard as we did. So, so um, at this point, um, I'd like to make a motion um, that the select board um, go into executive session um, citing 1 VSA 313A3 um, to discuss a personnel issue. Second. All in favor? Aye. So at 745.